take a look at the two types of eukaryotic cells here. This here is a plant cell and this here is an animal cell. Now the central striking similarity between these two types of cells is the presence of the cell nucleus. This central organelle here that is found in both plant cells and animal cells is the cell nucleus. It was initially discovered by Robert Brown in the 1800s and subsequently received its name nucleus from the Latin word that means kernel or seed. Just like how the seed is the central part of a fruit, the nucleus can be thought of as the central part or the central processing unit CPU of the cell. Now why it is called the CPU of the cell? We'll learn about that in just a while. The defining characteristic of eukaryotes is the presence of membrane bound nucleus. All eukaryotic cells have at least one nucleus in their cell. The nucleus contains DNA which in turn contains instructions on what the cell needs to do to survive. To understand why the nucleus is like the CPU of the cell, let's take a closer look at how it looks like. The nucleus is almost spherical and has a diameter of about 10 micrometers. DNA inside the nucleus exists in the form of chromatin and chromatin is in turn made up of DNA proteins and something called ribosomal RNA or rRNA. Now this is how the DNA looks inside the cell when the cell is performing its regular function like producing proteins, growing or repairing itself. Chromatin can be thought of like a tangled ball of yarn or a tangled ball of thread. If you were to line up the DNA that makes the chromatin outside, it would extend to about 2 meters. But when the cell is about to divide, this chromatin would further condense to form structures called chromosomes. Uh, this is a typical structure of a chromosome, something that you must be familiar with. We will learn more about chromosomes and what they are made up of when we are talking about cell cycle and cell division. The nucleus is covered by two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane that make up the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. Recall what other organelles in the cell are covered by two membranes. The inner membrane is continuous and it covers the entire nucleus, but the outer membrane doesn't just cover the nucleus. After it is done covering the nucleus, it extends and folds itself to form the endoplasmic reticulum, the RER and the SER which are involved in protein synthesis and lipid synthesis. That is an extension of the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is riddled with a lot of small openings known as nuclear pores and it is through these nuclear pores that substances can enter and exit the nucleus. The nucleolus which is located within the nucleus is the place where ribosomal RNA or rRNA is synthesized and rRNA is needed for the synthesis of ribosomes and ribosomes as we know are the sites of protein synthesis. So rRNA which is synthesized from the nucleus along with a few proteins make up ribosomes which then exit the nucleus and move to the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm these ribosomes may be within the cytoplasm itself or get embedded within the endoplasmic reticulum forming the RER or rough endoplasmic reticulum. So now that we have learnt about the different structures that make up the cell nucleus, let's talk about why the nucleus is like the CPU of a cell. So basically the nucleus contains chromatin which in turn is made up of DNA. DNA has specific regions known as genes that contain information to produce proteins and proteins basically run the cell. Whatever function needs to happen inside a cell, some protein is somehow involved in that function and the job of the nucleus is to synthesize those proteins. But didn't I mention that ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis? Then how is the nucleus involved? The DNA basically contains the information to synthesize proteins, right? That information somehow needs to be taken to the ribosomes so that protein synthesis can occur. Does that mean the entire DNA is taken out of the nucleus and taken to the ribosomes? No. DNA is a genetic material. We can't be risking it by taking it out of the nucleus where it is safe and sound. Instead of doing that, the DNA is used to produce something called mRNA or messenger RNA. This messenger RNA or mRNA is like a transcript of whatever information is there in the DNA. It's a copy of the information in the DNA and this mRNA literally acts like a messenger and takes that information from the nucleus to the ribosomes where eventually proteins are synthesized. 
This way, the cell can be thought of as the CPU. It contains the directions or instructions needed for the cell to function properly. Based on the functioning of the cell, some cells have more than one nuclei. Like the smooth muscle cells that make up the insides of your intestines, they have more than one nuclei and other cells like the liver cells, these also have more than one nuclei. Why do you think they have more nuclei? Well, let's start with the liver. So the liver is an important organ that is involved in removing harmful substances from your body. So for that to happen, the liver needs to secrete a lot of proteins. So if the cell has two nuclei, it can synthesize more number of proteins almost simultaneously and secrete them at, at the same time, right? That will just save the cell a lot of time. So that's why liver cells have more than one nuclei. Muscle cells are actually quite large compared to the other cells in our body. And for a cell that size to survive properly, to replicate properly, to grow and repair itself properly, it also needs more number of proteins. So to secrete more proteins, muscle cells also have more nuclei. In contrast, these mature red blood cells or mature erythrocytes don't have nuclei at all. Can you recall of something else that is missing from mature red blood cells? Yes, mature red blood cells don't have mitochondria either and it is for the same reason that they don't have a nucleus either. The function of the RBCs is to transport oxygen to all parts of the body. So the presence of nuclei and mitochondria might hinder the transport process, might make it less efficient. To prevent that, to make sure that the RBCs can hold as much oxygen as possible, mature red blood cells do not have a cell nucleus. If they don't have a nucleus, how do you think then these red blood cells divide? And how do you think they produce proteins inside the cells? Think about that. And while you are at it, can you recall of some cells in plants that have more than one nucleus? 